And welcome to December 3rd meeting of the Syracuse Citizen Review Board. I'm Peter McCarthy, board chair. We have a quorum, so I am opening this meeting at 531. And welcome to all the board members. Uh, one member, Ruth Coots, contacted me, said she won't be here. Her grandchildren are visiting from out of town. They're leaving tomorrow, so she will be off. To, we do have a quorum tonight. Um, we'll start with board action items, approval of November meeting minutes. Any comments? Uh, could I have a motion to approve November meeting minutes, please? Lori, motion. And could I have a second? Cynthia seconded. Any comments on the November minutes? Okay. All in favor? Aye, aye. And I'll call people whom we can't see. Um, Cynthia, unmute. Oh, sorry, you're there. May, unmute, please. Who's calling user two? Is that May? That's May. Can you hear me? Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm okay with the minutes. Okay, Mary. I'm okay. Cliff. Cliff, you there? Hatisha? Hatisha and Cliff, you must both be muted. Hatisha is, but Cliff is not. Okay. Hatisha? Yes. Was that a vote yes for the minutes? Yes. Thank you. Cliff, are you there? Okay, let's call it one abstention. Uh, chairperson's report. Uh, we still have a second district vacancy. I haven't heard anything from the board, and uh, I haven't received any volunteers or recommendations. Uh, 2020 board terms. We, I noticed the minutes last time said to let Raynette know if your term is ending, if you intend to serve another term. Um, I do, and I've been meaning to contact the mayor's office to ask that I be reappointed. Uh, I will contact Ruth and ask her. And Dana, I think you're the, the third one. You're up. Okay. Uh, the administrator review, we have a meeting tentatively scheduled uh, with the committee for December 8th at 2.30. It's immediately following our police liaison meeting next Tuesday. I'm just waiting from Councillor Majak to see if that's okay with him. 3.30 was good for him, but it's not good for the deputy mayor. So hopefully that will work for December 8th at 2.30. Um, Lori? Yes. Do you want do you want our comments ahead of time or do you want us to have them at the meeting? I yes, I, I'd like them. I'd like it done ahead of time. If you want to send them to me ahead of time, that'll be helpful. I can compile them and that'll okay. be quick. I'll, that. I'll send out that form with a reminder. I did send one out initially. Right. I have the form. Okay. No problem. I'll send it for the reminder for that. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, on a body worn camera and use of force special meeting. Um, we had our special meeting. We'll hold off on the minutes for that. We don't have those yet. Are they done, Dana? They're not done yet. Okay. Oh, they're written, but they're not typed. Okay. So we will have minutes from that meeting. Um, just my brief comment, and I'll ask Renette to speak. Um, I thought we did a good job presenting what our comments were, and there was no response. Nobody, nobody basically had a response at all. I think we just kind of presented those. Renette, do you have comments about that? Uh, no, that's what I would say as well. Um, I think that um, it was good for us to hold the special meeting, um, good for us to have those documents, um, um, documents on file as to what our um, our comments were. There was some members of the public there, which was good. 
Um, there was a member from the department. Uh, Mark Russell was there. There was a uh, Kristen Smith attended. Uh, President Hudson from the Common Council attended. Um, Councilor Driscoll attended. Um, so I thought that it was an important meeting. Um, they did all receive a copy of the letter um, that we had previously drafted that I was reading from at the time that we did the meeting. So I think that it was important. Um, and it just was a way, I believe, to give the board members an opportunity to discuss any thoughts that they had um, at the time, because sometimes we don't have time at a regular board meeting to do that. So that's what I thought was important about that opportunity. And if any of the members of the public had anything to say in reference to what the CRB had recommended, we had that opportunity. So I think that, you know, I would encourage us to try to do that more often um, when we are getting ready to make policy uh, recommendations from draft policies, just so that the public knows that we are taking those, um, taking the policies into consideration and we are making recommendations and so it doesn't just appear in our annual report. So that was the reason. Okay, thank you. Uh, so let's move to administrator's report, Renette. Um, yeah, so we had um, three cases um, to come in in the month of November. This month has been, uh, well, I would say the month of November has been crazy busy for me um, in terms of preparing for the special meeting, um, reviewing that, the governor's task force. Um, I've had several other meetings this month, so um, there will be no case summaries to review um, an executive session um, I also have a death in the family this week. Um, so it has been a, a long month. Um, so hope you don't hold that against me, but you know, I have to realize I'm only human sometimes. So um, we won't have any of that. The monthly financial report, I will send you guys a, um, a draft of it like we have been. I apologize, I didn't get that to you. Um, I just finished training today. Um, I've been in two trainings this month as well. Um, I finished training today. The Use of Force Summit, which I normally go to Connecticut for, was a virtual conference this year. So I just finished training at 4.15 um, this evening. Um, and it started on Tuesday. Um, and every day it's been in training till about 4.15. Um, so, so um, this was better I, than last year's trip to Connecticut. <laughs> yes. Last year's trip to Connecticut, um, was not safe. Um, <laughs> it cost us a lot more money. <laughs> um, and, uh, so I know my family is happy because as you can see outside, we did get some snow. And so there's no telling what it was going to look like in those mountains. Um, and where the summit is held at, it's at the Mohegan Sun, and it's about an hour away from any sort of airport. So it makes it difficult to fly in there and then have to pay Uber or somebody to come drive you an hour. So just the amount, just think about the bill for that one. And there's no shuttle. So, yeah. Um, so we had um, that training um, going on, we also had the um, ILEA training that occurred um, as well. And so we completed that training and I have um, some information I will share with the board, some PDFs. Um, you know, I wish we had the opportunity to provide it to you. Um, I'll send it to you. Sorry, I've got windows popping up. Um, what's going on? Hold on a second, sorry. Um, so I wish I was able to provide that to you beforehand, but it will come in multiple emails since we noticed lately the email sending of case files has to be in multiple um, <laughs> emails these days instead of one large one. 
but I think the city has been experiencing some email issues. So I kind of held off on sending those. So we did have that training this month as well. Um, I think that is the end of oh, tonight. Um, I need to provide the governor's task force with my recommendations with regard to um, citizen oversight and other external accountability. Um, and that needs to be provided tomorrow. So I've been working on that as well. So um, we're very busy, but um, it's an important time where we can hopefully effectuate some real change. Um, and um, so I don't take it lightly. And those things are, you know, a little bit more precedent. Um, I wanted to talk briefly about the hearing process. Um, as you know, we've been trying to start holding hearings, but we are now as a city in the orange zone for the majority. Um, and the city office building is not open to the public still. So I know that the hearings in which we had subpoenaed officers on their uh, representative, um, Terry Bright, wanted to hold in-person hearings. And I did send her an email and I haven't heard back from her uh, with regard to any pot potential dates for that. But as we know, again, that was before we were declared an orange zone. So given that fact, you know, um, that has not occurred. So... We have to take all of those things into consideration when we get ready to try to figure out how we are going to, um, in a sense, dig ourselves out of the hole um, with the number of hearings that we'll have to start holding when we can. And so I think that that's a good way to put it. And uh, I thank everybody for the participation. Um, so far this year, as the year is coming to a close, we won't have another meeting till next year. So I want to thank you all for your patience. I want to thank you all for um, all of your continued participation. We have had, um, in spite of um, COVID happening, been able to um, change up and do these WebEx meetings. And so I appreciate all of you uh, downloading the technology and being willing to do something different um, than what we were prepared to do before. So I just wanted to tell all of you that. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Renette. And I want to express our deep sympathy from the board members about the death of your uncle. Very sorry to hear about that. And I know that's that's a tough time to get through for, for anybody involved. Um, let me just ask about hearings. So we are unable to hold any in-person hearings until the orange zone gets changed and we have no idea when that's going to happen. That's that's the status right now? Yes, that's what I say would be the most um <laughs> the most favorable outlook related to that in terms of um the safety of all the board members um trying to find a place um and you know not violating any sort of gathering rules. I think it was 10 but who knows uh, what that actually was going to be. And even if we did do it inside of the um, the uh, place in City Hall that we were talking about doing it at, I do believe that we would still kind of be feeling a little bit differently given the fact we're in the orange zone. Um, I think it would be different if we were in the green, oh, <laughs> but we're, we're so close, it seems, to hitting the orange zone. Um, I mean, hitting the red zone, actually, we are very close to hitting the red zone and we have Christmas coming up as well um, to think about. So, you know, I I'm sad that we are behind, but I also think that it's important to take into account everybody's safety um, at this particular time. Um, so, yes. Yeah, and I'm I'm fine with that. I don't think we necessarily need a board resolution to continue basically what we've been doing. Um, let, let me ask this, and I, I don't think we could do this immediately, but we did talk about the possibility of virtual hearings if we had a complainant who was able to get to a computer and be on that end and was willing to do virtual hearing. This would not be any hearing at which we subpoenaed officers because 
they wouldn't participate in those. But what do you think about that possibility? Like, you know, over the next month or two, I don't know. I mean, I do think that some of our complainants might be able to, you know, have the capability to do the WebEx meeting um, and we could do that. So we can we can look at the opportunity. I think most of them, from what I recall, um, wanted to do in person uh, hearings. So we asked them what did they prefer? And I think for the most part, they preferred an in-person hearing. And so then that's when we run the risk. I mean, we talked yeah. about like, you know, having them in the office, you know, down in the hearings room and then the board members being in our office. But then that presents an issue because we would not be able to maintain socially distance in our office. Um, and, you know, we would have to wear masks the whole entire time, you know, things of that nature. So, um, you know, I, I don't know. I think that that's another part that we need to consider um, what happens when the CRB is not able to hold a hearing, but has voted a case to a hearing. What is the next procedure? You know, mm -hmm. looking at what what is some alternative to that? Is it that the board votes and then the board and executive session discusses the, you know what I mean? It again, and makes a final decision and recommendation to the chief. We don't know, but it's going to be something that needs to be considered because I'm not sure that this um, in-person method is going to work for a little bit of time. I mean, yeah, we're o we're almost approaching a year in March. You know what I mean? For which we're we're looking at that, and it doesn't appear that we are, you know, at that place. And you know, I know they're trying to do some sort of vaccine, but are we going to require that the complainant have a a COVID free test within a, a week from, you know what I mean? Within a week from the date that we scheduled the hearing, are we gonna have to see some documentation that they, you know what I mean? Like then you got HIPAA yep. laws and you got all types of stuff that come into play. So it's like, we really need to rethink how we are gonna be able to do this safely, um, but also allow us to continue to process. So, I mean, yeah, People, and I don't. Know. I can see a lot of downsides to trying to hold virtual online hearings. I, I, I just, I don't want to push too hard. I just think we may, we may get to the point where we're falling too far behind. But I don't think we're there yet. And I, and as you said, there's lots of complications. Yeah, I mean, it's just things so. that we gotta, we gotta consider, and um, you know, w what we're gonna do. They're still testing in the schools. They're still trying to figure out. You know what I mean? They're still trying to figure out everything and the contract, you know, the contact tracing and, you know, it's just, it's just a lot. And, you know, yeah. I have some pre-existing health conditions that I'm concerned about, you know, the care for other people, you know, there's a lot going on there. I think that we all have to put in the consideration. So, yep. um, you know, so. So let's just put that one on hold for a while. Okay, so, uh, any questions for Renette about anything in the administrator's report? Okay, let's go to committee reports, community outreach. Um, so I know recently we did, um, we dropped off some materials for World AIDS Day. Um, Lori was able to do that for us. Um, and I know we participated in something else um, last month. Uh, we had a few going on, so I think that we have done the best that we we could, you know, based upon the circumstances and trying to create other avenues for us to continue to do outreach, which was more than we thought we might be able to do, um, given um, everything that's been going on. So um, I think that we we've done our we've done our best. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, with regard yeah to and I think we should, you know, have to do everything the statute suggests during this time. I think we're we're exempt from doing all all the outreach we would normally be expected to. Do. I don't I don't think we should have to worry about that. Uh, board development and training. Um, I know we were talking about getting Bob Stewart back, but then um, I think that we were also in a consensus that it would be good to have the new board members when if they were going to start in January 
to be able to have that training with him and for the other new members to be able to ask those questions that they thought were relevant, you know what I mean, as a learning tool for everybody. So that's what I remembered with regard to board development and training. Um, I don't know if anybody else has a has a, a different recollection of what I no, thought I, was. I, I think that's fine. Okay. Looks like everybody's okay with that. Okay. Uh, and we had a government relations meeting recently, November 16th. Yes, we had that. Does anybody want to talk about that? Well, so uh, we were we were asked to provide that status uh, report, and that has been provided. Um, I spoke to the chief in my monthly meeting, and he said he had received it. Um, and he was looking, he was going to talk about it in more detail, his thoughts related to it in our upcoming meeting. Um, so we have a upcoming meeting coming up. Um, can't remember what day it is, December something. Um, so we have that coming up. Everybody should have received their calendar invites for it already. So we'll see what is the take there after uh, related to that. But I do appreciate our attorney, Ryan and Kristen working together to say, hey, this is what we believe we have accomplished um, so far. Um, and that we are, um, you know, we think that we've made some progress. I mean, we've made some progress. So yes, we I, have. I, I think that Kristen was a lot more positive Love than she's been voice. in another meeting. I agree. I agree, Lori. Yeah, yeah, I thought so too. Okay. Um, he did ask me um, briefly in our monthly meeting, he asked me whether or not the department had provided me those specific cases that had kept crepping up as to whether or not there were specific cases that they were wanting to know whether or not the CRB previously sent them. Um, and I told them that um, Sergeant Russin had not provided me with any specific cases. I had began to share emails um, over a period of time showing that cases were provided to them and I was told to stop and um, then I hadn't heard anything else. So he said he would follow up with Sergeant Russin to see if there was um, any, um, you know, what was going to be the outcome related to that. Okay. Uh, police relations. We have a police liaison committee meeting next week on December 8th. I don't think we have any leftover business from the last meeting, do we? Um, I don't believe so. Um, as you, I don't know if we're going to get any, I think we're going to still have the same people that we have had on it. Um, and we're just going to discuss whatever we we can at that point in time. Um, I know, you know, given uh, some of the questions that we had were about CIT training and how many of the people in the department were going to be um, doing that. But then COVID happened and, you know, there's no real big training going on unless through like Power DMS. Um, so I know that was one of the questions. Um, as you know, we do have a new union representative. We have a new union rep. I wasn't sure if he was going to pop his head in and, and you know, for you guys to have an opportunity to meet him. I haven't heard from the new union president, uh, nor have I reached out. Um, so I'm not really sure. I have some outstanding questions out there related to um, some cases that we voted to hearing. Um, well, one particular case we voted to hearing, I had some follow up questions um, and also I had some data questions for the police department related to some things that I know that they've been working on the AG's report, uh, the requirements from the attorney general's investigation. I am waiting to get a copy of the request from the attorney general to make sure that the CRB is providing what needs to be provided. We were asked to provide all the cases from for the last four years, I believe, I think it's from 2017, 
2013, somewhere around in that. I, I'm drawing the blank right now. Um, but we were asked to do that. What was that, Dana? Was it for the last three years? I can't hear you. Go ahead and unmute. 2013. Okay. So we were able to scan in the cases. I think it was from 2013 to 2017, somewhere around in there. Um, and uh, Roberto is working on scanning in the rest. So we were able to complete that. I have not um, received a response from Kristen. So I wanted to make sure before I turned over, but we have them on the flash drive um, all ready to go. And Roberto has been scanning in the rest of the years just in case we needed to add, drop those onto there before you know we provide it to them. Um, it is the perception as of right now that any cases that have not been resolved by the CRB do not need to be provided to the AG's office. So as of right now, those cases that remain outstanding are still there. Um, I did advise that in terms of the outstanding backlog cases, we started with 100 cases that were backlogged from 20, 2017 through 2019, and we are now down to 66. Um, so I would like to report that, but I know things have kind of slowed down. Um, there has been some quarantine um, situations that occurred with the Office of Professional Standards that needed to be completed, um, and they have been working on the AG's office request as well. So I know I've still been receiving cases, but they aren't, um, and some of them have been on the list, but not as much as they had been previously providing as they began to try to get that request completed. So. Okay. Um, if we can do this in two minutes, we're gonna be done by six o'clock. Is there any new business? No public members, so no public comment. Lori, go ahead. Hey, it's just a question. Going back to the vacancy on the board, does the, if the person is representative of the second district, do they have to live in the second district? So it's my understanding that they do not have to live in the district for which they are appointed, but that particular, um, that particular common counselor, Pat Hogan, um, he did have a new person that he was ready to appoint. He proposed that person to the committee and at this time, I think based upon everything that's going on uh, with the revamping of things and, you know, all of that kind of happening, they decided not to uh, appoint anybody um, to the board. And even if we provided them with a name to appoint, they would still have to vote on it. So, you know what I mean? We still, okay. like, right. even right. though we appoint, we suggest somebody, they still have to approve it. So if they're not looking at doing that, then I shouldn't act my brain trying to think of somebody, right? Well, I would say that it's always good to have a list, but you know what I mean? Not knowing when that's going to happen, um, you know, but okay. that's, that's what I have with regard right. to that. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other comments or questions from anybody? Okay, and we don't need to go into executive session today. Um, unless y'all wanted to discuss anything in particular. Uh, I mean, I think that the most of the stuff that we discussed were appropriate for a public meeting. So unless you guys have anything else you want to discuss, we can go into executive session and discuss, but I don't know if you guys do. Cliff, I think okay. you had your hand up at some point in time. Did you have something to say? Oh. Try to okay. unmute again. There you go. Yeah, you go. yeah. Yeah, I was, I, I was um, just saying that, you know, I would love to be a voice, you know, when, when you um, decide to uh, speak to the um, chief about the importance of uh, the review board and um, his participa participation and in, in, in interaction with the review board on the importance of it. And also, I had wanted to ask about 
his status as far as, um, you know, being the chief of police, um, you know, and that, that, that whole situation, you know, with him, as far as his status as being police. Well, in terms of um, when we have the police liaison committee meeting, I know that you're on that one. Um, and then we had a specific people that were on the gover government um, government relations committee. And um, so, and then I just have my monthly meeting with him. I haven't had anything additional than those things that we have already previously established. And in terms of his position, I based upon what I read in the newspaper, the mayor says that he does not believe that him not being a sworn police officer affects his ability to be the chief from what I, I read in the newspaper. And I would say that as a constituent, you either should reach out to the mayor's office and ask some more clarifying questions or or I can't really answer answer that um, or, right, you know, right. reach out to the council related to that. But those are um, the meetings that we're talking about. Like we're not having any additional meetings to just discuss things where it's just our regular, you know, our regular meetings that we have established um, that mm -hmm. monthly meeting with um, which Lori attends, Peter attends, Dana attends um that government relations meeting and then we have the police liaison committee meeting so the police yet um liaison committee meeting i had it i had two dates in yeah we clarified first. that yeah i know we didn't have yeah. it yep so it's the eighth it's and you be on the that. Oh, okay. yes yep i i think i do have the link okay 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 no problem that's it yep Okay. Any other comments or questions from anybody? Okay. I'd like to take a motion to adjourn the meeting. Um, let Should me make sure. Can we make sure we call? Is that Dan that's on there without a picture? Yeah. Okay. Hi, just Dan. wanted to make sure just wanted to make sure we get attendance for everybody that was there. Okay. That looks All right. Okay, so a motion to adjourn. I think Cynthia made the motion. Do I have a second? And Laura, uh, excuse me, Dana seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. No. Okay, thank you, everybody. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you. I'm going to stop the recording now. <laughs>